Hi guys, it's Frank Hoos from Minilave.com. I still have my COVID-19 haircut. This must be about week 8 or 10. I'd have lost track now. But it's June 1st and uh, here in Richmond, Virginia, the counts of new cases have uh, dropped very dramatically. So things have started to loosen up a little bit as far as uh, getting out into public. But I'm in the over 70 crowd, uh, you know, with other medical issues. And so I have to be extra careful about exposure. But I sure hope I can get to the barbershop before long because it's driving me crazy. Anyway, a few weeks ago I did a video on the uh, table covers I made for the mini mill. I mentioned that I had uh, planned to make a similar set for the larger SX4 mill. And today we'll tackle that. So the mini mill sits over here on that bench. And then if we swing the camera around over this way, here is the SX4 mill, which is quite a lot larger, maybe three or four times larger. Uh, both in size and in weight, but it's uh, great for those larger size jobs that you can't do on the mini mill. We'll use this phenolic material, which is uh, similar to formica or countertop material, which you're probably all familiar with in one form or another, but it's very stiff, it's very strong, and it's resistant to all kinds of chemicals and solvents and heat and cold, pretty much everything. So, well, if you saw the video on the mini mill table covers, one of the features I like about these is there's just one screw here, which is uh, you can access with a little hex wrench, say two millimeter, I think. But anyway, loosen that up and it immediately removes. And if you watch the video, I had a little mistake I made here and I later patched it. So on the underside, that patch shows up, but it's not very visible on top. But the key to the thing here is this little T-nut and it's uh, intentionally slightly loose, but it, it has a uh, an extra pin in it to keep it from rotating around so it doesn't get tangled up when you try to slide the table cover into place. So it's a very quick operation. You just drop the T-nut down, slide it forward, and uh, take the little hex wrench, give that a turn or two. I'm doing this left-handed, so it's taking longer. <laughs> There we go. And it holds, it's just with that one T-nut, it holds very tightly. So it's a nice system because it's very rigid when you want to use it, but you can quickly and easily remove it if you want to use the T-slots for something. So I plan to do something pretty similar uh, with the SX4 mill. But one thing I learned uh, working on the mini mill <laughs> is you, you, you can't see through the uh, stuff, and so it's hard to tell or judge uh, by measuring exactly where the T-nut needs to go. In this case I'll probably have to use more than one T-nut because the table covers are so much larger. Maybe two out here, one, one out here and one out there. Uh, having them spaced farther apart I think will uh, give it a little bit more rigidity overall. What I eventually figured out on the mini mill is I could make a transparent template which is what I've done here and this is just a piece of acrylic. It's actually a one of what I call my unclip boards that I use with a, a pad and paper for taking notes when I'm out and about. But I just uh, pressed it into service for this job so I could mark on here where the T-slots are and the other measurements I need to get things lined up. And then I can transfer those onto the white panel uh, without going to a lot of uh, trouble trying to measure where the T-slots are. Months ago when I first got this I had cut out a notch here for the uh, vice clamp. So now we just have to line that up and uh, figure out where we're going to put those holes for the T-nuts. So based on the work I did on the mini mill, the positioning of the T-nut has to be somewhere like here. It has to be close enough to this open area so that when I slide the table cover back it slides out and can be lifted out. But you can only slide the cover back until it hits the hand wheel and you have to be able to lift it up. So the T-nut can't go very far down the slot and I'll take some measurements here and figure out. Now I have these uh, shop made T-nuts I made a few years ago that work pretty well so I'll use that as a model but it doesn't need a 3 8 inch diameter hole like this one. It needs a pin and uh, a threaded hole for a much smaller screw which will be a, a flathead screw on the top of the table cover. I'm hoping I can get by with just one, probably located in this T-slot 
Uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, I measured the range of table cover movement, and I've only got about two inches before I hit the hand wheel. So I have to have no more than two inches before this T-nut gets out into the open area. So that puts it about here. It can't go any farther in than that, or it won't clear the end of the T-slot when I slide it off. So we'll uh, start out using that location. So here's the plan for the T-nut. We'll need at least two of these and maybe four, maybe even six, I don't know, but I'm hoping to get by with just two. But I'm going to make this out of aluminum, and I think I've got some one by one aluminum uh, square bar that I can just cut down and use. So these uh, dimensions are based uh, approximately on some earlier T-nuts I made out of steel. And here's one of the uh, steel T-nuts. This pin is just an alignment pin, and it will be a 1 8 inch diameter drill rod, and I'll drill a hole uh, just under 1 8 inch and probably ream it, and then press fit the drill rod into that, and it'll be rounded on top, and uh, it'll protrude from the block by 7 millimeters. Total length will probably be about 10 to 12, I guess. Didn't specify that. Um, and I decided on this one, the uh, covers are actually seven point, about seven and a quarter millimeters thick. So I'm going to make this just under that seven millimeters, and hopefully I won't I won't drill a through hole for these, so that, uh, the hole or the pinhole will be hidden, and only the hole for the screw will show on top of the table covers if it all works out. So these dimensions are just uh, all metric twenty four down here 13, 10 and 13, and then 20 long. So let's take it over. I'm going to do this on the mini mill. <laughs> I've got this giant one inch end mill here. <laughs> At least it's giant for the mini mill. And it's uh, I'm holding it in a big end mill holder. So it uh, looks kind of oversized, but I've used this a lot of times like this. And it uh, it's good when you have a workpiece like this and you and you just want to smooth off the surfaces making just one pass or no more than two passes. This happens to be a cob type drill with the uh, for roughing out or you know hogging out lots of metal. I've never actually used it for that uh, maybe once or twice but the uh, flat part of it does a pretty nice job on a surface like this so I'm not really using these side cutters at all. I've already made a few passes. I've brought this uh, side to dimension now and you can see that most of the chips, not all of them, but most of them are trapped down in uh, these plastic uh, shields. So this next dimension is uh, 23, and the workpiece is uh, already 23.09, so just going to take a light skimming pass on the top there, get rid of those saw marks, and that should be all we need. Actually went a little farther than I had intended, but that's all right not a critical dimension. I'm going to make one more pass because I dug a little, uh, like a little extra scallop there that I want to get rid of. And there's a, sort of a wire edge there. I take this now over to the belt sander and clean up these uh, sharp edges on it. And that uh, gets rid of any burrs. So when I measure it on the uh, surface plate, the burrs don't uh, throw off the measurement. Well, you can see by comparison with this other T-nut, it's already a little, still a little taller. So it's uh, shorter than I had intended, but that's okay. It's uh, well within the range of what we need. So this next dimension will be the length of the T-nut, essentially this way, and I want that to be 20 millimeters. I don't have a clean bottom edge on here, so I'm going to just press it up against this block here, which I use just as a V-block, but I know it's uh, fairly square, close enough certainly for what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to hold the uh, workpiece up against that. I will make this top surface square with these sides.
All right, I've measured it and it's 29.62, which I've written down on the notepad. These DROs I have on the mini mill are relatively low cost and they're accurate and reliable, but they don't have very many features. And in particular, you can set a uh, distance. I could set this to 29.62 and then count down from there, but it's a real pain to do that. So usually what I do is I just write down my measurement, which is 29.62, and then subtract where I want to get to, which is 20. So I need to go down 9.62, and I just write that down on the pad. So it's not very elegant, but it gets the job done. Now we'll just uh, cut it down a half a millimeter at a time, at a pass. I could probably go to a millimeter, I guess. Let's try a millimeter and see how, how much it complains. I'm going to turn it by hand at first and just see how much it does. Yeah, it's not real happy about it, but let's try it. Yeah, I guess we'll stick with half a millimeter. Okay, it looks pretty good. And then we've got to take it over to the belt sander and clean up the edges. Okay, I think you can start to see now how this is going to uh, play out. Now we've got to cut these um, sections off the side here, these two L's, and uh, then we'll be very close to our final dimension. So over here we have the surface plate where I do my layout work, primarily for milling. I rarely do any layout work for uh, jobs on the lathe, but I like to do it for milling just because it's, <laughs> it's easier to screw up, or at least I find it so. But uh, so the plan here is we're going to mill away these two hatched areas here. So we'll mill away these two hatched areas, and what we'll have left uh, should look more or less like that. And I'm going to turn the workpiece like this so we can mill in the x axis and use the power feed. And I'm just going to touch off on the top and then we'll measure down using the DRO, five and a half millimeters. I've shifted to a one half inch diameter four flute end mill. I want to clean up some of these chips and then we'll uh, see how the chip uh, capture works for this end mill where we're down close to the vise. It should do a better job since there's less room for the chips to jump over the top. But the uh, trade-off is that the head gets down close to these plastic shields and they can actually get in the way. So I'm thinking I may make a new set of shields or a different set of shields that are cut lower towards the center where the mill head is working most of the time and then come up higher on the sides to capture chips that would otherwise fly over the edge. I'm going to touch off on the top of the workpiece, then we'll zero the z-axis DRO. We're going to go down five and a half millimeters. Now I'll touch off on the front edge, and we're going to go in 13 millimeters from there. So I'm just going to run the end mill slowly and advance it until I can see a little chip come off. Okay. Actually, I could hear it before uh, I saw the chip. If the shop's relatively quiet, sometimes I can do that. So we'll zero out our Y-axis. The camera's on a very long arm, so any vibration tends to be uh, magnified. Let's see if this is any better. We can cut in either direction for this operation, so uh, we'll just come down another uh, 0.6 here millimeters and we'll go back on the opposite direction in the x-axis the mini mills in the center of a fairly long bench so the only convenient place to mount the camera is on the same bench that final depth I've got about uh, two tenths of a millimeter left to go 
but I'm going to clean up this back wall here first and then we'll take a final pass and get them both I think if we can. Cutting in this direction on the side here it does make a difference which way we go and going uh, the direction we're about to go here where the uh, workpiece is moving to the left against the cutter it will be conventional milling. See, then when we go back the other way that will be climb milling. Okay, now we'll take a climb milling pass back in the opposite direction. takes care of that side. We got our section cut out here. Now we just have to cut this one out and we're pretty much done. Alright, well there's our finished work piece. Clean some of the chips out of the way. The next step is to take it over to the belt disc sander and clean up these uh, rough edges here. And I also like to clip off the corners here. I don't like to leave uh, sharp corners on most of my work. Well, from the standpoint of chip control, you can see that the plastic shields did a pretty good job of enclosing the chips and keeping them contained, so cleanup will be relatively easy. But we'll do a quick test fit over here on the SX4 mill, and it uh, looks pretty good, so 